Hello and welcome to Net Present Value. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Net Present Value is a great way to measure an investment's worth, but you need to know a critical detail to get it right in Excel. So stick around till exercise three. I'll show you how to avoid a common mistake when you wanna include the initial investment amount. Let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. Before we talk about Net Present Value, let's just talk about present value and the time value of money in general. The quickest way to explain this is just to use your instinct. Like what would you rather have, $1,000 today or $1,000 over the next five years? Obviously, you'd rather have $1,000 today. Why? Because money today is more valuable than that same money in the future. And future payments are worth less today because of things like inflation, opportunity costs, and risk. So the way we adjust for that is called a discount rate. So let's say we assumed a discount rate of 10%. Our question is, what's the value today of a cash flow stream of $1,000 over the next five years. In other words, $200 a year for the next five years. What is that worth today? That's called the present value, and Excel has a function called PV to help us figure that out. Equals PV. The first argument is the rate. That's the discount rate in C19. Comma, the next argument is the number of periods. That's the number of years here in F13. Comma, the next argument is the payment per year, and that's the value we've stored here in F12. Close function and enter. And what we see here is that if we assume the discount rate is 10%, a cash flow stream of $200 a year for the next five years in today's value is worth about $758. And instinctually, that feels about right. Now, the higher the discount rate, the lower the present value. For example, if our discount rate was 15%, our present value goes down to $670. This also explains why the lump sum lottery payout is smaller than the actual advertised jackpot amount, which is paid over time. So now that we have our bearings, let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. Now Excel has a PV function and an NPV function. Both compute the discounted value of a future series of cash flows. The present value function uses the same cash flow amounts and you can specify if those were received at the beginning or the end of the period. The NPV function allows you to use different cash flow amounts, and the assumption is that those are received at the end of the period. So let's just compare these two functions. Here, we receive $200 per year for the next three years, and our assumed discount rate is 10%. Equals PV. The first argument is the rate, that's stored here in C13. The next argument is the number of periods. That's the value here stored in C12. And the next argument is the payment, and that's the value stored here in C11. Close function and enter. Here we get 497. Now let's do something similar with the NPV function. Equals NPV. The first argument is the rate. Once again, we'll use this discount rate stored in C13, comma. Now, instead of using the number of years and the annual return amount, we actually specify cell values. So we just select the range F11 to F13. Close function and enter. And here we get 497. So if they both return 497, like why do we have different functions? Here's why. The PV function assumes that all the payments are the exact same amount. However, the NPV function allows us to specify different cash flow amounts. For example, let's say in year one it's 200, then we go to 300, then we go to 400. That's easily supported by the NPV function. Now in this example, all the cash flows are positive. What happens if some years we have negative cash flows? Well, that leads us to the next exercise, exercise three. So let's say this is our future series of cash flows. We have some positives and we also have some negatives. So we wanna sum the present value of each of these cash flows. So let's start with the NPV function, equals NPV. The rate is the discount rate stored in C14, comma, and the values are our cash flows, which are stored in the range of C8 to C12. Close function and enter. So the net present value of these cash flows at a 10% discount rate is 657. But what if we wanted to account for the initial investment amount? Like, did we have to pay something in order to get this series of cash flows? Well, let's say we had to pay 500. In order to factor that in, what we wanna do is basically take the NPV function results and then we want to net that against our initial investment amount in C16. So we take the NPV function results of 657 minus the initial investment amount of 500 gives us a net present value of 157. Now there's an important assumption here. The NPV function assumes that the first value is at time one, not the initial time, time zero. In other words, I can't go initial investment 
minus 500 and then do an NPV function at this rate for this series of cash flows. Close function and enter. This gives me 142 instead of 157. So in the grand scheme of things, these values aren't much different, but they are different. And the reason is it's also discounting this initial investment amount all the way back to time zero. In other words, this is assuming that all of these come at the end of the period. And I just wanted to point that out because it's a little quirky. And let's just go ahead and reset this. So is there any conclusion we can make about this investment opportunity given that the net present value is a positive number? Well, generally what we might conclude is that this investment is worthwhile given the discount rate of 10%. And one more thing, this function assumes that these cash flows are in even periods, but maybe the cash flows in reality come in in irregular periods. How do we handle that? Well, we'll cover that in the next video. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 